Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. We're at Goodison Park where Everton have just been beaten in the Europa League by Olympic Lyonnais. You can probably still hear their supporters in the background still making a lot of noise long after the final whistle has gone. Graeme Stewart had thoroughly disappointing results but more positives to take from the performance than we've had recently. Yeah, I would agree with that, Darren. I mean, obviously, the, the foremost thing is the fact that we've been beaten again and now we make our lives very, very difficult in terms of trying to qualify from the group. We're going to pretty much have to win the next three games. So uh, that's the downside. The plus side is I thought we had a bit more spirit about mm. us. Um, the lads no doubt tried. They did put the effort in. They put a shift in. But ultimately, we've lost again. And, uh, you know, there was key moments in the game. I think the big moment in the game is Gilfie hitting the post when we're... One, when it's 1-1 that totally changes the game but it wasn't to be horrific start to the game wasn't it it was a difficult start to the game yeah I mean Mason's made a rash ch tackle we're 1-0 down backs against the wall again at 1-1 when Sigerson hits the post if that goes in or Michael King gets a touch I'm thinking there's only one winner here yeah I agree as I said it's that's the, that's the key moment in the whole game you know, and then we shoot ourselves in the foot, give possession away on the halfway line, they break away and score, and all of a sudden, a Goodison Park that was alive and kicking is, is, is silent again, and uh, that's, the, that's the downside to the game. More to come from Graeme Stewart in this week's Everton show, but let's get some reaction now from the defeat that leaves Everton with an awful lot to do in Group E of the Europa League. You know, it's frustrating now. I think probably everyone you know, involved is going home frustrated. I know I am and the lads... You know, but when we sit down and we analyse it and we, and we move on, we have to. We can't, you know, stay. We can't stay down about this for too long. So we got a game in a few days, and you know, we'll we'll be in in the morning and we'll do our analysis on this game um, and we'll recover. And you know, I do think there there are positives to take from this game, especially you know the way we fought as a team all together. You know, right to the end. And from you, I mean, last season scored a winner against Arsenal after some tough form, and that seemed to turn the season. Could happen again. You know, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? Um, no, but. Yeah, it's a they're a good team, it's a difficult game. Um, as you say, it's, sim it's kind of similar to the way things were last season. And um, Obviously, we take the same result. Um, and as I say, we'll, we'll recover from this game as quick as we can. And we'll go and we'll come back to Goodison on Sunday, positive, and um, try and win that game as well. That fight against Arsenal and the Goodison crowd behind you, it's, it's a big game and it, and it can change the season, can't it? Yeah, well, it was, as I say, it was similar last season and I felt like that, that did turn the season a little bit for us. And um, you know, we know that one of these times we, you know, if we keep you know, keep the, that kind of mentality and work rate and, and, and effort, um, you know, something will drop for us, and and you're hoping that that, that will turn your season. And, and you know, the, the good thing is we can get over this game because we've got another game so quickly, so we can't dwell on this, and you know, we'll move on. Um, you know, hopefully, hopefully, as I say, same result would would be nice. When Ashley Williams scores his equaliser, there's a pulsating atmosphere here at Goodison Park. It was a real Everton European night, wasn't it, for a yeah. while? It, it was, Darren, and, and, I, and I'm glad some of the players that perhaps haven't experienced Goodison Park like that have now seen what it can be like and how much of, of a, a pull that the, the fans can be. They really do get behind the, behind the team if, if they can see the spirit and the desire is there. Obviously, it's on the back of a pretty unsavoury incident involving Ashley Williams and the goalkeeper and what have you, and we don't condone that. But it does just, you know, just does show that if you know if there's a few tackles flying around and there's a little bit of incident, the fans are right behind you. We don't mind a bit of argy bargy, do we? Oh, as I long mean, as there's no red cards involved. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it was, it, it, as I say, it's an unsavoury incident that's no doubt going to have repercussions for the club, which is we don't want to see. But you know, they like a little bit of blood and thunder. The fans, that's the reality of it. And let's be honest about it, we've, we've needed to see a little bit more spirit from the boys over the last few weeks. Ronald Koeman gave Ashley Williams the captain's armband and I thought he led by example on, on the night. Yeah, I mean, Ashley was fine. I mean, he was, he's, you know, I'm, I'm delighted for him that he scored the goal because that will give him a lift and what have you. And then he was in the, in the forefront of all the action that, uh, you know, preceded all that. So, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a shame that he's lost as a captain on the night. But, you know... It, Ultimately, there's, there's a few more positives than there has been to take from this game. It was certainly better, wasn't it? Well, let's shift away from Europe now and into India. Have a look at this piece of film. It's when Graeme Stewart went to Bangalore for the Premier League live event.
Graham, that looked a lot of fun, but I'm sure you're going to tell me it was hard work over there. Of course I am, yeah, it was hard graft out there. I mean, no, it's, it, it, it was terrific. I've had the experience of going out to Mumbai a couple of years ago, so I knew India was a, a great place to go and a great place to take the Premier League and, and showcase it because that's what the Premier League want us to do and uh, there are a number of clubs out there representing the Premier League and we were one of them and I think it's important as a football club that we back the Premier League. You look at what the Premier League's done for us as a football club for the whole of the Premiership and the riches that it's brought to us, so the least we can do is uh, support them. There were a few familiar faces on that piece of film there. Yeah, there was a good few. I mean, it's, it's always great, you, you know, you meet up with a set of lads that you probably haven't seen for a, a, at least a year or so, and uh, you know, it was good to catch you up, mate, with the likes of Alan Shearer, Paul Dickoff, I've always got on great with. Jerry Taggart's a terrific mm. guy. You know, John Barnes was out there, obviously, for Liverpool, so there was representation from the two Merseyside clubs. And, you know, we all got together and we all put a shift in for the, for the Premier League, you know, going out there, coaching the kids out there. Plenty of interviews for Indian, uh, the Indian press and just basically showcasing because they are so keen mm. for Premier League football out there. There's a, such a, an appetite for the game out in India. And, uh, you know, they, they really did... Uh, they really did enjoy the weekend. It's still somewhere behind cricket, isn't it, in, in India, football, but it's making ground. It is making ground. I mean, obviously, I mean, it stands to reason cricket is their number one sport. And, uh, you know, you get with the likes of Tendulkar, he's a national hero for them. But it is growing, football. And uh, Robert Perez was out there representing Arsenal and he had experience of playing out in Goa. So uh, he, 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 he said it's growing all the time, yeah. Do you sample the local cuisine over there in India? I know you like an Indian. I do like an Indian, and it was plenty on board for me. I tell you, <laughs> as I've, I was a bit disappointed when I had to leave the place. <laughs> well, we told you last week on the Everton show that Congo-born midfielder Benny Beningami had signed a new contract at the football club, and we caught up with him earlier this week, and he confirmed how delighted he is to commit his future to the Blues. I'm very, very happy, very thrilled. Uh, been working, been working so hard for this. And I'm just glad that Unzi and, and his staff and, you know, have given me this opportunity again, which is very good. David Unsworth has spoken very highly about you as well. How does it feel when you hear the coach speaking about you in such glowing terms? Oh, it's great, it's great. It gives you that confidence to, to carry on doing well, which I think we all did last season. How we, we won the league, we were a team and we, we weren't carrying anyone, which is very good and we all played very well. And you moved to England when you were very young, didn't you? So how did the move come about? Oh, uh, yeah, my dad got a job here, so we all, we all moved around, the, around here and it was quite strange at first because, you know, new language and everything, so, but now you are kind of used to it, it feels like our country now, it feels like my country now, which is, which is good, everyone's been very welcoming. And you've been at Everton since you were very young as well, so Everton feel like your club as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, it does, it does, it feels like my club, you know. That this is where I want to be, and th this is where hopefully I can make my debut and play many more matches. And you've had that experience of training with the first team as well recently, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. How's that experience been for yeah, you? Yeah, it's great. It's great. J just to see where you're at, you know. If if you can do it with the first team, then hopefully you've got a great chance of making it. And when you're training with those types of players, people, especially in your position, Morgan mm -hmm. Schneider, yeah, yeah, are yeah. they players you look up to? Yeah, yeah, team? they are. They are. I dress a gay. I look up to him so much. You know, I, I love how he plays. Hopefully, you know, I can play just like him. He's already a smashing player, Benny. He's a smashing lad as well, and he's got a big future. I'm just delighted that it will be at Everton. Yeah, real bonus for Benny, and he deserves it. Thoroughly deserves it because he's very highly thought of at the football club, as the contract now shows. The under-23s are doing well this season. They lost against Wolfsburg in the week but had a very young side in the Premier League International Cup. The under-18s last weekend had a fantastic victory, 5-1 against Sunderland. Yeah, brilliant victory for Paul Tate's lads. I mean, uh, they've been playing some decent stuff, the under-18s of late, so I'm sure Paul Tate's going to be absolutely uh, delighted with the, with the form that they're showing. Anthony Gordon scores the first two goals, which is great for him. I like Anthony as a player. He's got a little bit of animal cunning about him, a bit of devilment, just plays off the front man there, and uh, he's come back into form. And then Manassi Mampala goes and, and steals the thunder from him and scores a hat-trick. So, uh, you know, that's terrific for him as well. You know, if, you, if you're a striker, you live and die by your goals. So it's great for those two lads to have scored uh, the five goals between them. And Paul Tate is delighted the fact that they're scoring different types of goals, as we can see. Yeah, very much so. It's important. As I say, it's great to see the strikers scoring the goals, but the build-up to the, to the goals and, and, and the execution of the finishes were a different class. It was a terrific win for the under-18s. 
Nice to see the young sides in good form. And that's just about it for part one of this week's Everton show. But don't go too far away because we're back indoors for part two when we will be joined by Wayne Rooney. Welcome back to part two. As you can see, I'm delighted to be joined for the first time on the Everton show by Wayne Rooney. Thanks very much for okay. coming on, Wayne. It hasn't been the start of the season that everybody wanted, but when the going gets tough, the tough get going, you've got to look at the positives, take them out and work with them and, and build on them, haven't you? Yeah, you have, and I think we all knew before the season started it was a tough set of fixtures and um, we started the season well, obviously getting a win at Stoke and um, a draw away at Man City. And then from there we, we struggled really in terms of, of results and um, performances weren't as, as good as we, we know we're capable of. And I think the Tottenham game we started well, a um, bit of an unlucky goal against us um, from Harry Kane and um, and then um, we wasn't good enough, we didn't respond good enough and and um, we've had tough moments in the last few weeks but um, Brighton I think we could have won the game, um, we've done well, we showed good character to get back in the game after going a goal down and we need to try and move forward and um, we have to start putting points on the board and um, with this game now against Arsenal, it's an opportunity to play at home, um, big pressure. Arsenal are not in the, the greatest form themselves, so I think it will be a good game and um, a game which I believe we can we can win. The Premier League table's still tight, isn't it? Had we beaten Brighton, and we should have had another penalty as well, we'd have been in the top half. Yeah, I think um, I think the Burnley game was the one which um, we knew the fixtures were tough and um, the Burnley game at home was a game we, we should have won. and. I think we deserved um, more out of the game, if I'm being honest. But um, you know they done well, they defended well, and, and they, they obviously got the goal and, and seen the game out. And that was the one result which you know we, we were really disappointed with. And, and then obviously the Brighton game, we feel I, th I think I believe that we have to go to them games and, and take three points. And um, although a point at the end um, in the circumstances of going a goal down and, and getting a late equaliser. It's a it's a point in the end which you know was a good point, um, but we have to win them games. As I said, there have been positives, not least of which has been the emergence and the form of Dominic Calvert Lewin, who's done smashing. Yeah, I think Dominic's got so much ability and you know so much um, energy. Uh, physically, he's he's really imposing on defenders, and um, he'll be a, he's got a a big future here at Everton and. I think um, if he keeps learning um, the way he is, the speed he is, um, you know, it won't just be the future, it'll be the, you know, now the, the present where, you know, we'll be calling on him in games and um, he works hard in training, you know, on the training pitch in the gym and um, I think he just needs that bit of luck to, mm. you know, to get that goal. I think once he gets that that goal in the in the Premier League, then it'll, it'll kick him on, but um, certainly up to now he's showing great signs and um, he's, he's a good lad as well, and that's what you want. He's, good he's got an assist in him as well, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. He, um, he created my goal against Stoke and Man City. And I think what players don't realise is how how strong he is. He's obviously a tall lad. Um, he's he's quite thin, but he's so strong. And um, I think defenders are starting to realise that now, and um, trying to be a bit more physical with him. And, and that's where he can use his pace to his advantage as well if they try and get too tight to him, he's, he's got the speed to get away from them. So I think um, he's still learning the game, obviously, and once he, he learns the right times to to hold off defenders, right times to run in behind and or come short to feet, then he'll, um, he'll be a big player for us. Does he come to you for a bit of advice? Yeah, I speak to him um, a lot about different you know things in his game, different things in my game, how um, if we're, we're playing together, um, different runs we might make and how we can help each other. and. I think um, it's important for him that I can try and help him get better at that, but also for me to try and understand more each time we play together, the way he plays and, and try and form an understanding with him. Do you enjoy that part of the game now, Wayne, that you are a senior professional, having the opportunity to help the young players? I think it's part of, of um, as you know, your role as a, as a player who's you know, played in high profile games and, and played a lot of games, it's part of my role to sort of help them but that's a, a small part in 
in which um, I feel I can help. The, the main part is is doing well um, as a team, and um, we all have to help each other. And um, I think that's something we need to improve on in the next few games. Everton versus Arsenal at the weekend. It'll never be just an ordinary fixture for you, Everton v Arsenal, because it was the game 15 years ago that catapulted you into the national spotlight. Does it seem 15 years ago? Um, not really, I think. But it does at times. <laughs> yeah, at times, but you know, it seems still like it was around the corner as well. It's obviously my first goal in the Premier League um, for Everton and um, the winner. I think they were on a 30 odd game on beating run. And it's still, um, you know, a, such an important goal for me as a as a player in my career and um, a goal which I'll always remember. And um, it was a special moment. <laughs> Did you realise at the time or a couple of days later that life for Wayne Rooney was never going to be the same again after that goal? Um, no, not at the time. I think at the time I was just I was just buzzing to score um, the first league goal. Um, I always remember. Thinking um, I need to score before I'm 17 in the Premier League. I played a few games and that was what I wanted to do: was score when I was still 16. And I think that was the last league game, the last chance I had to do it. And thankfully, um, Moisey brought me on and I got the winner. The score and the goal before you're 17, and the score and the goal against Arsenal past David Seaman in the last minute from 25 yards. It was pure theatre, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was great. And I think after the game, it was it was a uh, there was a great buzz around the, the stadium after the game, and I think the fans were they realised that you know someone who grew up watching Everton play and being there with them in the stands, and um, you know had gone onto the pitch and produced a special moment. And I think the fans feel that. I think to score the winning goal, um, you know, and, and in the manner it was scored as well, um, I think the, the buzz around the stadium was brilliant. As you say, you wanted to score while you were still 16, so as you were warming up that day, were you trying to catch Moisey's eye? Were you yeah, to urging be honest, him to I put you on? Yeah, I was before the game. Because <laughs> <laughs> I played him um, a couple of games before that, and I thought I'd done quite well, and I thought I deserved to, to start the game. And um, Although I was 16, I was always confident, and I always believed that um, I was good enough to play, and I think that was always being part of me. Um, my character as a, as a football player and um, I remember not being happy that I weren't playing and obviously when you look back you understand and you you, you realise why um, they're doing it to protect you a bit you know both from physically and you don't you don't really you can't physically play mm. all the games you can't play 90 minutes every game and um, so that's what he was doing but um, yeah I just wanted to get on the pitch and um, try and make an impact and thankfully I did. I was speaking to David Unsworth about that goal at Finch Farm early this week and he said just make sure Wayne remembers who won the ball in the first place. <laughs> so it was clearly him but take it from there from when Thomas Graveson lofted the ball forward what do you recall? Yeah um, I think it's, it's come to Tommy and he's just he just tried to get something on him and get it clear and I remember having a look over my shoulder and um, seeing the Sol Campbell it was it, it dropped off and um, left me in the lot of space so give me the time to bring it down and turn and as soon as I turned I seen I had the space in front of me to shoot and um, I had the goal took me chances and um, thankfully it went in the top corner. Is it possible to explain or even remember what thoughts were going through your head when you saw the ball flash past David Seaman and into the back of the net? Not really, um, I just ran off, I um, obviously remember running over towards the main stand and um, I always remember being on Kevin Campbell's shoulders. I don't know if that's after the game. <laughs> I or think that was at the end. Is it at the end? I always remember being on Kevin <laughs> Campbell's shoulders, and um, but I could see the the excitement and the how happy the players were. Because they, I think, all the players knew how much it meant to me, and you could see it in in my teammates' face as well. So it was a big moment for me. What did you do that night, Wayne? Um, you must have watched the match of the day, surely. I can't remember if I watched it, you know, I went back home, um, remember we we, had, we just had a kick about in, um, obviously where I'm from, in, in Croxteth. So you went out to play in the street when you got in? It was just like a few garages and we used to go back there, I would go back after every game and um, just have a kick around, chat and just with a few lads and that was it really, it was not, not special. The excitement at the stadium was a mixture of pure excitement at the brilliance of the goal and, and 
little bit of disbelief as well. I did the commentary that day with Steve Watson and he just took his headphones off, just threw them, he didn't know what to say. What was it like in training the following week, can you remember? Um, was it just get back in and get back on with it? Yeah, I remember, I actually remember before the next game thinking, you can't leave me on the bench <laughs> for this game. But no, I think it was, yeah, just, at that time, you just want to be playing every day. You want to be playing games every day, and um, that's all I wanted to do was just play. And um, terrific for your mum and dad, wasn't it? Yeah, me mum and dad, obviously, my dad, um, massive Evertonian, um, always has been. And for him, um, it was such a proud moment to see his lad um, come through the academy. Was I know he was extremely proud of that, but then to go on to the first team and. And that first goal was um, it was an emotional moment for him. Let's look ahead to this weekend, Everton Arsenal. Arsenal this season, you're never quite sure what you're going to get, are you? Um, yeah, no. I think with Arsenal, you almost know what you're going to get. The fantastic footballing team. I think um, Arsene Wenger's done a fantastic job, and in my eyes, unfairly, it's the the stick he gets, and um, he's a great manager, one of the best managers. You know the Premier League. He's probably second to Alex Ferguson in the history of the Premier League, and um, you can see what he's trying to do with the the team. I think they've been a bit unlucky. They've got some fantastic players, and um, the first time really he changed his way of playing was the end of last season. He went to three at the back, and he's done that time for the season. And I think um, it's going to be a tough game. You know the other past and move, move the ball and um, try and get into little pockets and cause problems. Um, what do we have to do to get something from the game? In my in my opinion, we have to be compact, um, not let them, not allow them the spaces in between um, the defence and midfield, and you know get behind the ball, stay compact, and and try and frustrate them, and and then when we get chances, play, try and play a bit and. But I think we, we have to be ruthless, we have to be more ruthless, you know, um, in terms of creating chances, taking chances when we get them, but and aggressive, not not just in terms of tackling, but in, in terms of running, um, even the way you communicate with the other players, with each other, um, everything's got to be more aggressive in, in, in that sense. And I think the fans feel that, and, um, if we can do that, we be solid and and then try and you know we will get opportunities. Um, we know that we will get our chances and just be ruthless and, and take them. And but also we need to be a bit wary because Arsenal are you know one of the best teams in the league. Well, I know it's a busy time, so thanks very much indeed yeah. for joining us. Please do join us again in seven days' time for another Everton show when hopefully we'll be reflecting on a bit of history repeating itself. You've been watching The Everton Show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you can catch every single future episode.